Welcome everyone, Costin here with a new video for Total War Warhammer 3. This was inspired by playing a campaign as Rapunz, making that guide that I just did. And making me realize that, damn, do I really, really hate the Southlands. Not Araby, Araby is fine, it's a relatively safe position, but once you start going into the Southlands, it becomes genuine misery, regardless uh, as who you play it. So in this video, I've decided, you know what, let me cover the worst campaign areas, the worst campaign locations that currently exist in the game. The campaign locations, the regions, provinces, what have you, that are going to be the most difficult to deal with. It really is about geography here more so than anything else, though obviously having a lot of legendary lords clumped together in a single zone is going to contribute to that situation as well. So at number five, the first area that I want to cover on the campaign map, it is of course the Darklands. And the Darklands I consider everything all the way from the north here pretty much uh, to the south where Emmerich is. But basically where Emmerich and K Craventail start. Now you might think, oh it's not too bad, there's only a bunch of minor factions, sure. If you're playing as Emmerich, you have to deal with Craventail. If you're playing as Craventail, you have to deal with Emmerich. But that's not necessarily the worst situation in the world. However, what makes this especially bad as I pan around the map is this. The distances between these settlements can be pretty large, especially something like going from uh, the Falls of Doom all the way here to try and take some of these uh, settlements. It does genuinely become a very quick problem. And I imagine it's actually something that's going to affect the dwarves, the chaos dwarves, when they do get added in the game. That is certainly going to be a problem for them. A large, empty area that they're going to have to deal with. Because you're just going to waste campaign turns trying to traverse this area. But what makes it especially bad is this. You're sandwiched on one side and another uh, between legendary lords. And actually that's one of the worst situations to be in, in any campaign. Uh, to the west you have like, Forgrim is gonna get to the border over here, so if you're praying as Craventail he might show up. Um, Skarsnik, uh, of course, might become a problem. Uh, and then you have Queek over here to the south, like if you're playing as Emmerich. And that's just to the west. Never mind that you might have people like Scarbrand or or Lamia showing up, or Labaras, sorry, showing up as well, potentially. But at least two potential friends, which is Queek and Skarsnik, well, Forgrim as well, so that's three potential friends, though of course Forgrim and Skarsnik are going to end up fighting each other. But to the east, you have Gorst, and dealing with Gorst can be something of a nightmare. If you start expanding east, like, if you start expanding north, you're just going to leave your territory very exposed. So, there, there's issues with that. And you can in, even end up, um, if you go too far north, you may end up dealing with Grimgor. Who is not the guy you want to face. Or Greasis. So, you, you have issues to by expanding north. If you go west, you meet the lords I mentioned. If you go east, you meet Gorst, maybe Kugath. Greases. So regardless of the way you expand, you're just leaving yourself vulnerable if you're playing as either Emrick or Craventail, or if you're going in this territory in general, uh, there's a lot of border security that's going to be problematic uh, to deal with. And because of the large distances, it's very difficult to react to any particular threat one way or another. This is what makes this one of the worst campaign areas in the game. Now, number four, there is the Empire. And regardless of which campaign you're playing in the Empire, be it Vlad or Isabella or Festus or Karl Franz or Gelt, you're gonna have the same issue again and again and again. The Empire has very unsecure borders pretty much on all sides. There's a lot of Dwarven factions that surround them, which may be predisposed uh, in favor of Gelt and Karl Franz, but certainly against Vlad, Festus, Stryka, etc. Um, may be predisposed in favor of the Empire until they start getting attacked by other factions that are going to hit them and the territory they occupied is open 
So for instance, Durfu could very well decide to come down from the mountains and attack Nol, or to attack uh, Dampire. He's actually at war with Dampire, he's gotten his ass handed to him. And although there are Imperial forts at strategic choke points like Helmgard, uh, Burgess, and others, like Fort Sol, although those do exist and they will help the situation, there's still plenty of opportunities for an enemy army to advance in your territory, for instance, through Blackfire Pass over here. You're surrounded by a bunch of factions, like within the Empire itself there are a bunch of minor and major factions that are going to be fighting each other. But beyond that, there, beyond what lies in the Empire, it what lies in the Imperial borders. I've literally had to go and take out Karakadrin and Zufbar over here. I'm actually waiting to take this territory so I can trade it to Forgrim so he can leave me alone because uh, maybe or make me make a peace with Forgrim to get that situation sorted out. But yeah, it is um, not a pleasant territory to defend. The more you expand, the more you open yourself up to more and more enemies. So let's say you start to ask Karl Franz. The last thing you want to do is actually take on Marienburg, who may declare war against you. But if you take down Marienburg, you will meet the World Walkers, you will meet the Norskans, you will meet Bellacor most likely as well. And who's actually getting invaded by looks of it by Leoness. That's an interesting uh, outcome over there. Um, but you will meet uh, plenty of factions that are going to be predisposed against you. It is especially annoying on higher difficulties that actually meeting a faction on a campaign map means that quite likely at one point or another unless you get good diplomatic relations against them or they're um, in favor of you they're quite likely going to declare war against you. A bit of a legacy I feel of Shogun 2 where the strategic threat bullshit really came uh, came to be and that continues to this very very day. So yeah, the Empire is hard to defend, there's a lot of territory, and you know, the geography of all of it, the fact that, yeah, you have dwarves in the mountains, but the mountains themselves will likely fall. You might need to raise the mountains to the ground, because a lot of the factions that do work in the Empire don't necessarily have reasons to want to occupy the mountains, because it's a lot of, it would cost a significant amount to actually colonize uh, said mountains. So it might just be a better idea to burn the mountains uh, to the ground. Just a notion uh, to have. Like, this is a campaign as Vlad von Karstein, and it's turn 53, and I've been, I had to run around not just conquering territory of the Electro Counts, but also having to deal with things like Azak, Karakadrin, Zufbar. I mean, the only reason I haven't had to deal with Forgrim is he's been busy. Though he did declare war on me, like that is the laughable part about it. Like he's been getting his ass handed to him by the bloody hand, and yet he did declare war against me. And he didn't pose a challenge, but yeah, I think it's geography in this case combined with having an enormous number of factions, probably some of the most in the game of any particular area, uh, combined with how the AI just behaves at the moment, that makes the Empire genuine misery. At least most of it is the same kind of uh, climate, which is not the self, which is not something you can say for some other areas, provinces, regions in the campaign map. And number three, we have Nagrand. You want to talk about the Thunder Dome, Dome in Warhammer 3? This is it, really. Quite a few factions that do despise one another are going to go to war against one another, and the terrain itself doesn't make that a very fun situation. So say for instance you play as Malekith, right, you have the Iron Foothills, and you take your initial settlement of Hal Har Haldra, which you can do on turn 1. Well, congrats, you've just met Valkia the Bloody, more or less, or you've met her vassal. Though you soon will meet her yourself. Now sure, you could expand north if you're playing as Malekith, you could take the Chaotic Wasteland, take out, uh, expand north, take all this territory, secure your north, Go on a slow grind doing that. It wouldn't be easy, by the way, dealing with something like Valkyrie. She would be able to present a significant challenge. But beyond that, 
every single legendary lord will have not just one but multiple foes to deal with so for instance if you're playing as grum brindle yeah you start to award the same scheme and uh, clan that malakov starts to award they hold these elements like altar of ultimate darkness the gorge the spire but the problem is to the south you have some orcs they may be an issue you have some ogres you can make deals with them further to the south you have katep uh, you have Tarox, and all of and all of these things will be an issue if you're playing Grumbrindle or Malakif, hell, even as Valkia, though, since Warriors of Cast are so overpowered, and she actually starts in a safe corner, she won't have those same uh, issues. But by and large, if you're playing in Nagrond, you, it's not that the territory is so exposed as, say, the Empire is, for instance, or Darklands, it's more so navigating said terrain, because it's a lot of mountains, can be something of an issue uh, when you are dealing with it. On top of that, there's just a lot of mountainous, mountainous uh, settlements that do come up. Uh, so, for instance, if you want to expand in Hag Reef, uh, you find yourself in the situation where you know one of the settlements is unpleasant climate. If you want to deal with the mountains over here in the Iron Mountains, uh, again, same kind of uh, problem. Just a lot of mountains. Different terrain types, hard terrain to navigate, lots of legendary lords and dangerous ones too, like Malakith, Grumbrindle, Valkia, Tarax are not some slouches. Nine, none of them are slouches, all of them are very, very dangerous. And you have them all in like the same kind of corner of the map. I mean, let alone th talking when we start talking about things by, like Helebron or even further to the west, we start talking about Sigvold. And don't assume that Sigvold is not going to be an issue if you're playing a Nagron campaign or a campaign in the Nagron area, because he most certainly will at one point or another. Though he's going to spend most of his early game fighting demons, but he then will show up and become an issue for you to deal with. And the issue is, there's a lot of ways to exploit the terrain in Nagron if you're an attacker, because there's a lot of openings to exploit. It's not the grand borders of the empire, but yeah, there's a lot of ways to get around if you want to attack a faction, surprise them, and take them out. Which makes defense an absolute nightmare, makes expanding your empire here an absolute nightmare. Uh, because you, the best way to defend your empire is to have choke points, geographic choke points. You're just not going to be able to do that if you're playing an Agron campaign. My best advice, make some deals with Katep, the Ogres what have you, give some allies, vassals uh, territory, let them deal with that while you expand in a different direction. Like, they, let them worry about securing one particular flank as you expand in a different direction. This is what makes the Warriors of Chaos so good, by the way. Not just the fact that they're only really going to care about Dark Fortresses, which are going to be secure, but that you can rely on your vassals to hold a line, so to speak, in one area while you're expanding in another area then you don't have to turn back. Very rarely do you have to turn back. Very rarely will your vassals even be wiped out. Um, and if they do, yeah, sure, you can march there and deal with it. Or you can raise an emergency army in your dark fortress in a particular province, in a particular region, and tackle an issue. But if you're playing another faction that doesn't have those kind of luxuries, yeah, it can be tricky maintaining multiple armies to or raising an army to deal with an emergency uh, situation where someone showed up on your border, your undefended border, because you're busy expanding in one area, you can't be everywhere at once. And Nagron just prevents you from being able to properly uh, defend yourself. Like, look at this situation. Like, look at this Malakif campaign. What do I do here? Like, if I go north against Valkia, Grombrindle is going to show up. And defeating Valkia is not exactly the easiest fight. Maybe I could go against Grond, make some deals with Valkia, give her the territory. Not ideal either. Or take out the Skaven over here in the Iron Coast and then have that fight to Grom Brindle. But I would not hold this territory. Maybe I'd give it to the Orcs. I would not hold this territory because two of the uh, regions are mountains. That, a genuine misery in a lot of ways. Expanding uh, if you're playing as the same Malekith, as Grom Brindle. There's quite a few factions. I mean, Tarox himself, who doesn't care about holding settlements, just raises this, this to the ground. Yeah, that's okay, because taking advantage of those openings is what you do as Tarox. You find an opening, you exploit it. But playing as a faction that needs to hold settlements, that is a very different situation indeed.
Now, number two is the Southlands. It has the same issues that I've talked about. Borders being hard to defend, lots of lords in those areas. But somehow it gets worse when you're thinking about uh, the Southlands. Because in the Southlands, the vast majority of legendary lords are not going to be able to expand across the entire territory. So, for instance, if you're playing Acetra, which I am right here, sure, I can colonize the wasteland, but I can't colonize the mountains properly, or the jungles, or the magical forest of the Wood Elves. If you're playing as Rapunz, you're not going to be able to deal with the wasteland, though you will be able to deal with the desert and the jungle, I believe. That's already a problem. So the Southlands themselves have a wide, a fairly wide variety of settlement types. So you've got mountains, desert, wasteland, jungle, all in close proximity. And the problem that especially gets recreated in like here, in the Shifting Sands, or the Land of Dervishes, or in the Land of Dead, is that the border can be fairly wide in all of this. So if you're holding the Shifting Sands, then you can expect some of the factions to the south to declare war on you. For me to deal with that issue, I literally went here in the Western Jungles, um, even though it's cost me quite a bit to settle here, it I found myself being able to neutralize the Lizardmen much easier and secure my border in a much easier and better fashion uh, than I would otherwise, playing as Camry. But it is a problem. It is a problem. Like in this particular campaign, Antok and Bagar fell again and again and again because I couldn't devote the armies to deal with them, especially when you're playing etc. You only start with one army and you're only going to have one army for 14 turns. You want to hear a fun tidbit? You start with one army in the, one of the worst areas in the game. Arkan, who literally starts in the safe, secure corner, can get two armies from the very start. What? Like, if anyone needs two armies from the start of the campaign, it absolutely is Cetra. More so than anyone else. But yeah. And beyond just the geography situation, the borders being hard to defend, the different types of climate right across the border that make it difficult to expand across that border. Beyond all of that, what is another issue is this. In terms of endgame events, you have one at the Black Pyramid of Nagash. The Sentinels will spawn. Nagash will return. I've managed to uh, to deal with that er, personally. Well, largely deal with that. They still have a stack of uh, two stacks of troops here. Uh, then there's another possibility of Manfred spawning. This is the ultimate crisis mode, by the way. Then a Wood Elven, uh, then Wood Elven stacks around the camp, so that's free already. And then, of course, Forek. So four of the endgame events can spawn in your near vicinity. And if you're playing with the ultimate crisis mode, this is probably the worst area or one of the worst areas for it. Because having four ultimate four crises right on top of each other in the exact same area, or pretty much the same area, can be a challenge. Though it kind of worked out uh, for me because Forek ended up fighting uh, Manfred. Manfred ended up fighting the Wood Elves, wiped them out. He actually wiped them out. So it kind of worked out. I'm just going to have to beat Manfred, etc. I'm just waiting for my armies to move in so I can do that. But it isn't, uh, it isn't a pleasant uh, place uh, to, uh, to defend. Much better territory is what Rapunz or Arkans start with. Like, they have much easier campaigns because they can gain all of this lovely, juicy territory of Araby. And yeah, sure, the mountains here are not necessarily the best, but they can hold them and there's some gemstones in there, or they can leave the dwarves be. Um, and then you can form a front, a front line, so to speak, here between Xantri and the Black Pyramid of Nagash, and you'll be relatively safe. In particular, as Rapunz, who can make deals with Volkmar, so he can secure her southern border, and make deals with Cetra, who can secure her northern uh, situation here. But it can be a problem... Uh, playing as a lot of factions to do border security, to secure, to get the, those core territories, because you're constantly being attacked from the south, from the north, from the east. Only the west is really safe, and even then, not initially. Like if you're playing as Volkmar, Manfred, etc., uh, even to a degree Forek, if you're playing as any of those factions, legendary lords, you're going to encounter this issue. 
and there's no easy fix for it. It's just a question of how the area was designed. Uh, you can't really expand in certain paths because, yeah, sure, it would be nice to get all of this uh, south territory, but it would cost me a significant amount uh, to be able uh, to do that. And I just don't have the flexibility to do it when, you know, plenty of other things necessitate uh, my attention as well on the campaign map, like, you know, the Books of Nagash, for instance, which are strewn across the world. We could talk about how the Books of Nagash are not exactly uh, great either. How they're too far spread around the world and getting them can be an absolute bitch. Uh, but that is a discussion for a different video, perhaps. But yeah, the Southlands, if you play a campaign here, do expect to fight a lot of battles very early on, and for those battles to never cease. Personally, I find a complete and utter misery to play a campaign in the Southlands. I've played, I've tried one as Cetra, I've tried one as Volkmar, I've tried one as Forik, I've tried one as Manfred, and every single one, and even one as Rapunz. You end up in the same position, even as Rapunz, even though she starts in a much better position. Uh, you just find the campaign complete and utter misery. Because you don't have a way of preventing your territories from being raided, from being sacked, from being attacked, from being constantly under threat. You just do not have a way of dealing with that. And finally, and number one, there is Kislev. Of course, it is Kislev. Kislev has only three major cities. Prague... Kislev itself and Erengrad. Outside of that, all that Kislev does have are these provinces with minor settlements only. And this applies to playing a non-Kislev faction as well. So all these forts, all these minor uh, settlements, they're going to be minor settlements regardless as who you play. So pretty much all of Kislev, be it the southern, eastern, western oblasts or troll country, they're pretty garbage. Uh, provinces to begin with. And these, if you're playing as Kostaltin or Katrin, are gonna be some of your core territories. That's pretty bad. It's also pretty bad and kind of pointless in a lot of ways to expand into Kislev because you're not gonna gain much from it. Like, for instance, if you play Frata and Clean, your campaign plan isn't to take Kislev out, though the AI Frat will certainly try and do that. But if you're playing Frat, it is a much better campaign pl plan to head over to the north, take Krak a Drak before Trog shows up. Even if Trog shows up, wipe him out. Because those cor those territories, this entire province, is going to be significantly more useful for you than trying to expand into Kislev. Even the cities themselves, like for Skaven, even having a single city like Prague or Kislev is not particularly useful, because Skaven need to have multiple settlements to really, uh, in a province, to really make a great deal of income and a superb amount of income. Like Skaven, Blight, and Help It, that's a different discussion, right? Uh, but like Prague, yeah, not necessarily. Um, and I mean, those help, and it's not like Skaven, Blight, and Help It are the best elements, it's just like they have unique structures that make them work worth it. But generally, Skaven would want provinces with a lot of settlements in them, so they can build a lot of structures in those settlements and really take advantage of the provincial income benefits that they can get from um, some of their structures. But you can't really do that when you're, when you're dealing with Kislev. So, already, that's a problem. It's actually an issue that exists in the mountains of Morn with ogres. Beyond that, and as I've talked in numerous videos, Kislev is like hell on earth, pretty much. You have seven, eight, like you have three legendary lords to the north, Frat, Azazel, Trog. You have Kasaltan and Katrin, that's five. And then you have Draika, Azag, and potentially Fe Festus. So that's what, seven or eight total to deal with? That's a lot of legendary lords all clumped together, as well as a bunch of minor factions uh, in here uh, to potentially deal with. Deal with. You have Osland, uh, you have the Druzina Enclave, you have the Kindred, you have the Brotherhood of the Bear. Though the Brotherhood of the Bear is not going to be long for this world, nor will the Kindred, nor will the Druzina Enclave. It's just, this is the real thunder though, in the game I feel. Because you have a lot of legendary lords. The Chaos ones are going to fight the Kislev ones. The Kislev ones are also going to fight Azag and Draika, potentially. And it's going to become a really big, messy slog of 
a campaign for pretty much anyone who plays it. Uh, except Azazel, because Azazel doesn't care about taking settlements, he cares about taking our fortresses, so he just takes this tower, take, wipes out the Brotherhood, and then goes deal with Norska while trying to maintain some kind of diplomatic relations with Kislev and like letting poor Frat actually handle the heavy lifting until he descends from the mountains with multiple sacks of troops to just wipe everyone in his path. It's not too bad if you're playing Azazel, it is bad if you're playing pretty much anyone else in this area. I mean, even if you're playing as Trog, going into Kislev is actually the dumbest thing you can do in your campaign early on, because, again, unless you're willing to take the major cities, and there's downsides to focusing on that as well, difficult battles, uh, not necessarily worth the effort. I mean, Erangrad, yeah, a random port is worth more than Erangrad for, uh, for Trog. Like, Kislev is a, in, is a place where you do go through eventually if you're playing, say, as Archeon, as Azazel, as Frog, but it isn't worth the effort. It isn't worth the investment. You're gaining very little for what it takes to, to take over. And if you're playing a Kislev faction, you're fighting tooth and nail for these territories and getting very little in return. You're also exposed on a lot of sides. It's not exposed on the level of the Empire or other areas, but you're still exposed from the south, from the north, northwest. The sea is quote-unquote safe, though not necessarily. But yeah, between bordering the Empire, Norska, hell, potentially even having to deal with Vlad, yes. if you're playing like a Skatrin or Castalton, um, it does create for a general, uh, for generally miserable campaigns regardless of who you end up playing with. Unless you avoid it. Like, that's a, that's a key element. Like, if you're playing as Azazel, Frat, Trog, just avoid going in Kislev, at least for a while. Um, if you're playing as Kislev, well, you have no choice. You're screwed, pretty much. That's just how it is. And that's all there is to say. Kostin, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications, and I'll see you next time.